I love it. It's like a completely new fresh room. Wow. I love it. That is so pretty. <laughs> that is so pretty. <laughs> Today it's minus 23 degrees Celsius outside, so it's absolutely freezing. That's why I have the scarf and the hat still, even though the, the fire is going. So today we're going to do some inside projects, actually. And you have actually been a part of this decision a few videos ago. I asked you what kind of color you preferred to have on our ceiling. And today we have actually got the ceiling here. Not the ceiling, the paint. But first, before we can start paint, painting the, the white color, we actually have to start with what I think is way more boring. It's this. It's called shellac in Swedish at least. It's basically a, a thing that you put on the, I don't know what you call it, the twigs, the branches in the planks. So when you paint on the white color, the branches or twigs doesn't seep through. Now the actual fun is going to begin when I'm going to start painting. But there's so much stuff in this room, like this massive table behind me. I can't lift that by myself. And I know I should just empty the entire room before painting and so on. But it's going to be too much stuff and it's going to take too long time. So I bought this like a roll of paper and then I'm going to cover the things that I care the most about. Like the bookshelves and uh, the table, uh, the couch, and my computer, for instance. But the floor, I don't think I'm gonna cover because we're gonna sand that down and oil it afterwards. So if I spill some paint on the floor, it doesn't really matter because I can just sand away, I hope. Okay, here we go. If I'm gonna be completely honest, this terrifies me just a tiny bit because it's so irreversible. Like when I'm starting painting, that's it. I really hope it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna look good. But here we go. It actually smells really good. I'm literally two planks in and I have one, two, three, four, eight, nine, ten. I think six, 16 planks left and I already like really feel it in my shoulder because I'm standing quite close to the ceiling and then doing this. But I have a very smart thing I got from a girl or woman at the hardware store. It's called Maria, and she t gave me a tip about this one. I don't know if you can see it. It's, I can't tip it over because then it will be paint everywhere. But you basically put your hand either in there or in there. And then it's almost like you can just rest it like this. And then you dip your pencil, pen thing. Yeah, just very convenient. Instead of just holding this thing all the time, which is very heavy and very clumsy, you can just rest it on your thumb. I've never seen that before actually, so I thought it was very cool. But yeah, 16 planks to go with layer one. So this is, this is gonna take some time.
the girls have been really patient while I've been painting, so now it's time to give them some time and a bit of a reward. I have to say that one of the absolute most fascinating things about this whole renovation project of painting the ceiling has been the opinions. I've been doing a lot of renovations to this cabin during these five years I've been living here, but I have never <laughs> experienced so many opinions about it, because since we started posting about that we're gonna renovate uh, the ceiling or paint it, I have gotten DMs, emails, uh, like text messages even, about everything from praising it to like it's gonna look so good to a lot of comments saying you're gonna destroy the ceiling it's so much history i can't believe you're doing this i'm gonna unfollow you if you do this i don't care it's fun for you that you have your own opinion but it just fascinates me so much that so many people can have <laughs> so many opinions about another person's ceiling color I don't get it. Like uh, upstairs has been uh, the ceiling upstairs have been painted in white for four years now, and there has not been a single comment about that ever. I mean, if you get offended by us painting our ceiling, you're gonna get a small heart attack when you're gonna see our plans for the rest of the cabin. So yeah, stay tuned. Now, when I've done these edges here, these ones. I can <laughs> very clearly see how dirty the actual fireplace is. I mean, I've been thinking that this has been white. Um, this is white. This is 
dirty white or gray. So I think I have to paint this as well at some point. But I don't know exactly how because this portion right here, I've always wanted to fix this. I don't know if you can see it. This part of the whole thing has come loose. There's a big crack right here. And this whole thing is almost like loose. Yeah, I don't know how to fix that. I would love to do it before though, before I paint it. But yeah, it looks disgusting now compared to the <laughs> ceiling. <laughs> yeah, I just created myself a new problem. Before I get a lot of comments about it, I thought I might as well address it. Why I'm using a brush or a pencil, I don't know what you call it, uh, to paint the ceiling and not a roller. Because I noticed that during my live stream I had a few days ago that a lot of comments was about like, why don't you use a roller? Like, you know, one of those big things that's like this wide and can take a lot of surface at the same time. When I contacted the company that sold me the paint, they were very clear on that you're gonna get a completely different look and a finish if you use a roller compared to a brush. So I actually tried out on a separate board uh, with the same kind of material that the roof is already in. Tried it out with a roller and I tried it out with a pencil or a brush, whatever you want to call it. And I saw a major, di major difference and I really preferred the brush version of it because it looked way more organic and handmade. Um, it looked very flat and boring and unpersonal when I used the, the roller. So that's why. Oh, wow. It's now, <laughs> it's almost one o'clock in the morning and I'm so tired. But I'm actually finished with the first layer. Uh, it's been two days now where I've been going from almost nine in the morning to, yeah, after midnight. Do I have paint in my beard? Ah, oh, perfect. Yeah. So that was the first layer. Now we're moving on to the second layer, but first I would like to get some sleep. But it looks really good. Looks really good, actually. It became way brighter in here. Just by the first layer, and it's gonna look even better with the second layer. And when I get all the cozy lights up and everything. Yeah, can't wait to show you the, the end result. Since we don't have a bathroom inside or any running water, I always step outside to brush my teeth. And this evening I got a very good surprise. The sky is just filled with northern lights. The most amazing thing about these Northern Lights is that it's always a different experience. It's never the same. Like, I've seen so many now since moving here and I never get tired of it. It's so many different shapes, it's so many different colors in different areas of the sky. It's just, I wish everyone could see this one day because it's, it's pure magic. Now you can see the difference between layer one and two. Over here is layer one still, all the way up to here. And then this is the second layer as well. It's way fuller on the left side. And then way spottier, if that makes sense, on the right side. I actually didn't expect it to be that big of a difference, but it's, it's a major difference. At least in real life. I hope it translates over to the camera as well. <laughs> Can I tell you a gripe I have when it comes to painting the, the second layer? I mean, when you do the first layer, it's this major transformation. It's a big difference and it's just, you can just feel how it's going to look. And you can also see where you have painted before. So it's not, yeah, there's no guesswork, so to speak. 
But now, on the second layer, I kind of have to look from four different angles to see like, have I done here and then I feel it? Yeah, it's wet. Okay, I can do that again. And then, yeah, it's not as fun <laughs> to do the second layer. I just want to skip it. I know it's going to look way better, but I just really hate painting a second layer. End of gripe. Now the paint needs 36 hours to dry, which means I could lay down and actually rest for the first time in a long time. Or I can start another project. So I have this project that I've been meaning to do for quite some time now, and I think I can't push it anymore because in a few months we're gonna have a baby and I need this cabin to be as safe as it can be. And it's this staircase behind me here. This, it's quite steep as you can see. So I need to figure out a way to make it not so slippery as it is today. Um, so I've actually bought some some rugs that I'm gonna use as like, uh, what do you call it, like mats, like stepping things to step on. Um, not sure if it's gonna work, but I might as well just try it. So this is my idea. I'm gonna cut these ones in half. And yes, I know we have a lot of crap under the staircase, but please ignore that. So I'm gonna cut these in half, uh, but just to show you the idea, like have them like this, and then another one like that. Yeah, something like that. But now looking at it, <laughs> I don't know. Like the, I like the idea and everything, but the rug feel like something you would find at a retirement center or something. And yeah, that's kind of half, I guess. Okay, and then we cut. I mean, ideally it would be to sew these ends so they don't unwind. Unwind, is that a word? Yeah, you know what I mean. Let's keep going. I also bought this anti-slip material because I felt like the rug straight on top of the staircase like this was a bit too slippery. Um, so I bought this kind of mesh material that we cut out to uh, Kind of a good size, I think. And then we're gonna place the rug. That's the true perfectionist I am. It has to be the exact same measurement here compared to here. Try to avoid hitting my own thumb. First one is done. I think it turned out quite good. It's gonna stick there. Now we only have 13 to go. You want to try it? Come. Is it just approved?
So today we're gonna work on a project we <laughs> battle every single winter and it's this one. The door stops here and it's like you have to raise it up to even get in. And it's because the wooden deck right here it's raising itself a few centimeters because of the cold ground basically so it raises up. Uh, so now me and my friend Andreas is gonna take this away and hopefully lower it and find a better solution for the future so we can so we don't have to do this every single year. Now I've removed the pipes and we started adding these planks here in the back. And we realized we have to dig a bit to actually get down. Because the problem is that the whole uh, veranda deck thing is racing uh, itself this way in the front. And that's why we can't open the door. So we need to lower it a bit in the front and then put in some stabilization things here in the back. Actually, quite lucky it's not completely frozen yet, at least. It's just so amazing to see them run around like this. Snow for them is like, it feels like they're on cocaine. They just, they truly love it. And the good thing when it's this much snow, Nala that has a tendency to run away, she almost can't because the snow is too deep. So she can't get anywhere. So in a small instance like this, I can have her loose, which is amazing. You can really see that she's in her and a right element. So what I'm trying to do is to ease the load of the gutters right now because it's been snowing so much and there's so much ice in the gutters and so much snow on top of the roof. There's a lot of pressure on the new gutters and I haven't had those up for an entire winter, so I don't know how much pressure they can take. So I would rather go out and fix this before they break, because I can see it is like a bit too heavy. So 
something that I'm really enjoying is to watch all the birds and squirrels that are here. I remember in the beginning when I moved here, they were very, very shy. Uh, but I've uh, fed them every winter since I've been here and tried to, f uh, they eat, and they eat a lot. So I fill up the different food stations I have all over the yard. Um, every time, like one, at least once a day. And the funny thing is they've become way more friendly and they don't scare us easily anymore. So now I can actually stand next to the feeding stations while they're, like when I fill them up, they can actually come and eat just a few decimeters from my face. And that's really cool. There's still a lot of species that are very, very scared of me. Like uh, we have someone called Domherre. It's a red one. It's so pretty. Like it's very fat birds with very red stomach. That's the males. Um, and in the contrast of the white, the red just pops. It's so beautiful. And the squirrels that are playing around a lot as well. It's so cool to see. Um, and especially all the sp different species on the same spot. They're not kind of competing for the food. They're sharing it. It feels like it is. So Christine has this crazy passion for Christmas. Uh, she started talking about Christmas in late August, September, <laughs> somewhere around there. So this is her like peak period. Uh, and I thought I would make the cabin a bit more Christmassy, so to speak. So I bought some stuff like this one uh, and I bought some lamps inside. I'm gonna put up um, Christmas lights. I don't know what you call them. We call them use slingor in Swedish like to go on the edges of the cabin for the first time. It's gonna be quite cool to see. I mean, ideally, I would like to have one here as well, but I feel like whenever we're gonna open the door back and forth, this is just gonna fly off. So my OCD brain and my symmetrical brain really wants two of them, so they look the same. But yeah, it's still an improvement, I would say. I have to say, when Christine first told me the idea that she wanted Christmas lights on the edges like this on the cabin, I was a bit skeptical, to be honest. 
that it turned out really good. It looks really, really cozy. But I'll show you guys a bit later when it's a bit darker because that's gonna have a better effect, I think. But yeah, it turned out really off. Awesome. Christine is here in just a few hours. Now it's time to finalize everything, put up all the bookshelves again, to light some candles and make it really cozy because she hasn't seen any of this. I haven't shown her any pictures. She hasn't by, been by here to see the progress. So I hope it's gonna be a really good surprise. We're still in the moonlight. It's something sweet. Let it wash over all of me. With you I fall my company. Forever close to the unknown. There's no doubts, no regrets. Christmas feeling. Wow, Elskling. That's, that's pretty? cozy. That's so pretty. Wow, that's so pretty. <laughs> um, I love it. It's like completely new, fresh room. They're so good. We did. Uh, you did this. We did this. So <laughs> wow. I love it. That is so pretty. Just so new and fresh. Mm, I agree. It's amazing. Okay, I just Have you looked behind you? Ooh, that's amazing too. Wow, you've done so much, Elskling. Mm. That's amazing. It fits so well. You think so? So now we don't have to slip because that's my fear every time I've been I up and down because the the planks are so um, slippery. <laughs> slippery. Yeah. <laughs> So I always get so afraid when I have to walk in, the, especially in the night. Yeah. But now we have a lot of lights. Amazing. And, and the sleep material. So you're trying to make me move back, I can feel. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so pretty. <laughs> oh. I just think I'm so relieved because I was just so afraid that we never could get this like a fresh feeling in in the cabin. I've just been this old house feeling constantly, but now I'm like, okay, I can see what we are going towards. You know, I just feel like this cabin project is just you know hundred years away, and now I can actually see that it can be a you know it can be like a home. I actually feel really homey in. Yeah. Exactly. Ah, and also, it smells so good here today. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> she says it's pretty and it smells good. That's the last one coming from a very pregnant woman. I'm just so relieved that it smells fresh and. <laughs> so... Yeah. Okay, so what is the next thing we're gonna do? <laughs> we? <laughs> no. This house is gonna be so extremely beautiful when we're done with it. Yeah, now I can see that 